having considered all of the evidence and the arguments of the parties, the statute and the rules, and based upon the factual and legal findings as determined in the judgment, find you guilty. Hello, San Pedro. This is Brandon McCartick reporting for San Pedro Newspilot.com. Uh, today we bring you some serious news affecting many San Pedroans. Uh, as many of you know, uh, uh, there are over 35,000 Croatians uh, that have a, 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 that are of Croatian descent living in San Pedro. Uh, today we receive news that the uh, International War uh, Crimes Tribunal handed down a guilty sentence to uh, Croatian General Ante Gotovina. It's a, it, it's a sad, very sad day for many Croatians uh, in San Pedro. Uh, today uh, we have with us Jack Baric. Uh, Jack Baric is a Croatian American and he is also the producer and director of the definitive documentary on General Ante Gotovina. Um, uh, Jack, uh, tell us why uh, Croatian Americans in San Pedro um, feel sad today. Well, you know, during the war, uh, we here did a lot to help our people back home, and we saw for four years that they were being treated pretty brutally by the Milosevic regime with the weapons of the former Yugoslavia. And uh, when General Gotovina conducted an operation which was called Operation Storm in August of 1995. It essentially liberated Croatia and it was a, it was a glorious day for Croatian people, not just in Croatia but throughout the world, who finally felt that their people back home were safe and that Croatia could live as a free country. Uh, later it was found that in the aftermath of that operation that war crimes were committed. Um, there was houses that were burned down, elderly Serbs killed in their homes, and uh, other stuff. And um, because of that, General Gotovina, who led the operation, was indicted as a war criminal. And uh, in San Pedro, we felt that this man was a hero because he liberated our people, and now we were being told that he was a war criminal. And it was kind of hard to get our head around that. So I went and made a film about this subject, a film called Searching for a Storm, and in the film we examined, you know, what happened? What happened on the ground? Who's this guy, General Gotovina, and what led to this, to this uh, situation? So when this indictment was handed down and we started to learn about him, we realized that maybe he was being used as sort of a figurehead um, by the international community, by the United Nations, by the European Union, uh, to show that they were sort of right in how they conducted themselves during the war and their wartime policies. And those wartime policies essentially treated the war as a war uh, of a civil war, not a war of aggression. And in a civil war, it was sort of an all sides are guilty kind of idea. And so, if all sides are guilty, the Croatians are also guilty as well. So, so this uh, this indictment, this guilt, guilty uh, sentence, is really uh, uh, not just on General Gotovina, but the Croatian people, including the Croatian people in in North America, including San Pedro. Do they feel like a, a guilty sentence has been handed down to their culture? Um, yeah, probably do, and I think that's why there's a, there's a lot of sadness and maybe some anger. When I was out making the film, one of the guys who had taken off a holiday weekend to drive me around, I afterwards I thanked him, and he said, you know, you don't have to thank me. He said, this was my commander, and if he's guilty, then I'm guilty. And if I'm guilty, how do I look at my sons in the eye and uh, say, this is what I did during the war, with honor? And so when, when we hear that he's, been in, that he's been not only indicted but now convicted, it, 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 it puts sort of a shame on all of us, a shame that we, quite frankly, don't believe belongs to us uh, because after four years of being uh, under occupation, this was a liberating offensive. It gave us our country back, and it was done by a soldier who has proven himself to be very professional. And so for him to get the sentence, it feels like we're sort of worthless, like it's not worth it for us to even be allowed to fight to get what is our land back, recognized by the international uh, world, by the world, the, the boundaries were recognized as Croatian, but yet a, a quarter to a third of it were, were essentially 
occupied uh, in a way where Croatians couldn't go there, they couldn't live there, they couldn't, they couldn't travel through there, roads were closed, you couldn't get from one end of the country to the other. And so to get that back, again, it was sort of a glorious day for Croatia when it happened. And um, sort of our contention is that if it were up to the international community, we would have never been able to have an offensive to, um, to win back that territory because to them, the idea of an offensive to win back that territory was in and of itself a crime. Uh, tell us really quickly uh, a quick summarization of uh, General Gotovina's history, uh, how he at 16, which is shown in your film, uh, left Croatia and joined the French uh, Foreign Legion. Sure. So actually at 16 he left and, and, and got on a tanker ship and then a year later he joined the French Foreign Legion. So he was a, he was a merchant marine. And, and as a French Foreign Legionnaire, that's where he sort of learned the, 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 uh, the professionalism of war, and he was a commander in the French Foreign Legion. And um, he basically had retired from the military and was ready to sort of settle down to the rest of his life when he saw what was happening in Croatia and realized that this was a people that didn't have arms and didn't have accurate military training that could help. So he went back to help and very quickly rose from uh, the ranks of a normal soldier up to, the, up to a general. And while in Croatia, I met a lot of his soldiers and a lot of people who were close to him. And, you know, to a man, they all said the same thing. He was a person who really instilled discipline into them, and he really instilled this idea of how to conduct yourself during war. So everything that he's being accused of runs contrary to the character of the guy that they had served under. And it's why the Croatian people are, you know, of all, of all the things that have happened in the, in the num last number of years related to this war, this is the one that is really the most symbolic for the Croatian people because it's, it's, they're picking on the guy, essentially, who, who we feel uh, led us in the way that's very honorable. It's the hero. A hero. Do you think that uh, the people uh, involved in this judgment took a look at your movie? I have, yeah, it's funny. I don't. I have no idea. Um, they, they, everything I presented in the movie is what was presented in the court. So it wasn't as if they weren't aware of these things. A fundamental criticism of this court is that it is being set up to justify the policies of the United Nations during the war, and essentially the United Nations during the war was the governing body on the ground because they were the force that was between the two sides. And now the United Nations is the force that is running this court. And the problem with that is, in a democratic system, you can't have uh, the, the prosecution, the judge, and the jury be the same group, and that's what it is in this case. And if you were to ask many, many Croatians what they think, and Bosnians, and even I would say Serbs for that matter in, in, in many cases, they themselves maybe should be judged for their failures. And so for them to be judging what happened between 1991 and 1995 is skewed because they had skin in the game. And they themselves have been roundly criticized for their failures during this period of time. And, uh, and it feels like maybe this is a way of defending how they acted during that time. So speaking as a uh, Croatian-American uh, from San Pedro, what would you want the world to know about the situation? What would you want the international community to know about the situation? What is most important coming from your perspective as a Croatian-American? living in San Pedro. I think my perspective as an American, not as a Croatian American, is that I have an understanding of what it's like to live in a country that is a superpower, but I also have the understanding of what it's like to have a people that only have four million uh, residents within their boundaries, so they're very, very small. And through that I understand how a small people can become incredibly frustrated when they feel like the interests of the global community supersede their own interests in their own country on their own land. And out of that comes frustration, and out of that comes mistrust, and it, nothing good comes from that. If uh, others are interested in watching your film online, where can they find it? Well, somebody put it up on YouTube, <laughs> uh, and that version is actually a Croatian version, which has got subtitles on the uh, parts that are in, in English instead of the other way around. Uh, we're going to work on putting it up on my website, uh, searchingforstorm.com, and um, locally here in San Pedro, you can get a DVD at, at the... Uh, uh, Williams Bookstore on 6th Street, so locals can easily find it. Jack, thank you for joining uh, SanPedroNewsPilot.com uh, and for giving us your insight. Thank you.